Hi, everybody. Um, thank you very much for uh, dialing in. I'm a fellow Malaysian as well, just so you know. Uh, it's with great pride and it's a moving thing for me to bring a global investing platform uh, like Stash Away to Malaysia. Uh, as an introduction, my name is Freddy. Um, I'm a Malaysian. I'm also currently the co-founder and chief investment officer of Stash Away. I have 18 years by now. Yes, I'm getting older. I've seen 18 years by now investing experience across the group, multi-asset wise, uh, institutional and retail. Um, and, but thank you very much for having me today. All right, it's really good to have you, Freddie. So without further ado, let's move on to our first burning question that we have. So we know that we've stashed away um, quite a significant percentage of the investors' portfolio is invested outside of Malaysia. So what percentage for an average investor should be his or her portfolio be invested overseas? And why? It's a very interesting question and it requires you to know your goals. If your goal is to send your kid to to United States in a US university 15 years from now, it's a 15 year portfolio and it should be more biased towards global. However, if you want to retire in Malaysia 30 years from now, sure, it's a 30 year portfolio, but probably half of it should be invested globally. The other half should really be in Malaysia because after all, is the retirement currencies. So it really depends on your goals, how you want to set up the portfolio for each life goals you have. So do you think there's a disconnect there because of uh, investors out there, they are keeping what, 20%, 30% at most of their investment portfolio overseas? So how is this gap being addressed? I think the um, when you do a home investment by less than 15%, uh, 50% and is in retirement related, you take more currency risks, right? What if the Malaysian ringgit actually do really well in the next decade? So that is a risk implicit in your uh, personal uh, decision. Uh, I would caution investor to revisit those, uh, those numbers. Or alternatively, when you invest globally, you have more bias for global. Uh, if you have the skill sets to know what country, what geography actually reacts more like Malaysia as a currency, you have the expertise uh, then it's, it's really okay to have less than 50% in Malaysia, which is why Stash Away is here. Because we, going forward, we are constantly innovating. Our global portfolios is not a static portfolio. We move our allocations to US dollar and to different parts of the world based on economic conditions. As they change, our algorithms will change those allocations for free. So that decision with a platform like us is taken out of your hands it's made easier than before to do so. So that would be my take on that particular angle. Uh, yeah. So just a, a little bit deeper, because you, it's interesting that you brought up on uh, foreign exchange. Hmm. So how concerned should the average investor who has little knowledge on how uh, foreign exchange markets work be concerned with their funds being invested overseas? First of all, um, you got to understand that in a systemic market meltdown, there are certain currencies that does really well, and they are US dollars, Japanese yen, and the Swiss franc. And in particular, uh, in the Lehman crisis, dollar sing went up by 13.5%. Even Singapore was not really as safe haven as the US dollars. The Japanese yens performed even better, right? Uh, so dollar Malay also went up a lot, so meaning dollar outperformed Malaysian ringgits. So if you're suffering systemically from a global losses in the portfolio, it would be very nice to have a major upset in local currency terms. But this is uh, really the arena of experts who knew how to make use of currency to create portfolio insurance. As that's the way we do it in a systematic manner, it's automated, it's been built in, even I have no say how it, how it does it. I have I've designed it and it's on autopilot. Um, so we can take that problem away from investors over time. All right, thanks Freddie for sharing those insights. Moving on, how does an investor who is already working with a personal finances advisor benefit from using robo-advisory or digital wealth management services? I think there's plenty to go on for two days, um, but in summary, I think uh, let's first talk about robo-advisor in general versus traditional managers. Uh, the edge is already plenty because first of all, the fees are way, way lower than uh, the entry fees you pay and the high management fees you pay in unit trust. 
Um, as you know, if you're good clients, Unity Trust could cost about two and a half percent to end to enter, or even five percent if you're a smaller uh, client. And then the yearly management fees are higher. At Stash Away, like most robo, our fees range from 0.2 percent per annum to 0.8 for very small balances. The key thing is that the fee is not charged upfront. It's charged on a prorata basis. As you go by the month, you, you, you pay 112 off that 0.8% or that 0.2%. So because the fees are charged on a prorata basis, your money, are, your money is growing faster, working harder for you, much more aligned with performance. And there's many other stuff like better user in the first, uh, real-time updates, uh, no lockups, no penalties for withdrawal. Uh, it's fully flexible. When you need your money, your personal circumstances change, or you just lost your job, you want to unwind your investments and to pay expenses, who are we to stop you from doing that? That liquidity is personally very, very valuable for clients, and we've decided to make it as fluid as possible. So they're not just stash away, but I think in general, robo-advisors can perform a lot of those functions I just mentioned. On the stash away bit, however, I would uh, in summary say that we have introduced a lot of intelligence into the investment logic versus most buy and hold or, or permanently passive portfolio approach. And the main reason is because economic environment changes. In our lifetime, before you and I retire, 30 years from now, say, we will have gone through for five, six changes in the economic cycle. We may have gone through a few recessions, uh, a few good times, so those cycles are medium to long term. You can harness those information and make adjustments to the portfolio. If inflation is going up, we should buy some more inflation protection for our clients. We do it for free at Stash Away. Uh, unlike right now when you change strategy in the industry, you get charged entry fees again, you get charged new upfront fees. At Stash Away, we absorb the cost of switching strategy, switching assets. I think that's a key differentiator. We do this strategy change in the portfolio for free. Customer has a choice to say no. If you don't want it, you don't have to approve it. If you approve it, it's automated and it's free. So I think that's really key because to help you navigate changes in the economic cycle before you retire, those are big, big changes in our environment. We need to embrace it. We need to hedge. We need to provide protection to the portfolio. Well, definitely, we will definitely want to explore a little bit more about the yeah. economic situation as we um, move on. Um, before that, uh, we're just wondering, so how does Stash Away fit in with, um, let's say, clients who are already working with existing uh, personal finance uh, advisors and uh, traditional wealth managers? Um, by fitting in, uh, do you mean we compete or coexist? Uh, could be either or. <laughs> or both. And there's a bit of both, really. Um, we. I think the core principle is this. Stash Away is very happy to work with uh, other partners, but on the premise, on one premise, that we do not promote unnecessarily expensive products. We have to make sure our, ultimately the client's interests are protected. As long as that principle is not violated, Stash Away is very happy to work together with external fund managers, asset management firms, and banks, or any, anyone per se. And we have done it before. As you know, right, we, we even have an event uh, in Singapore. Uh, we're going to bring it here. We even have an event between Stashway and BlackRock. BlackRock is the biggest, uh, one of the biggest asset managers in the world, and we use their ETFs as well. But we have a natural interest to promote education and uh, to help people understand what are ETFs, right? When there's a common interest, there's a common benefit, uh, when there's no additional monetary benefit, no kickbacks, no commission, only customer interest first, we would partner with anyone, regardless of who you are. In fact, that's what we want to do. All right, and it's really great to hear that because that definitely aligns with uh, our vision at uh, MyPF as well. So it's also really good and very interesting when we first heard of uh, Stash Away's uh, proprietary uh, mm -hmm. economic uh, regime uh, asset allocation. All right. How would you describe it to, you know, um, as if, if I'm 12 years old, how would you describe this complex uh, term to me. Uh, it's a really good question. Um, in summary, asset, asset returns and risk do not stay constant. If you just think about the Malaysian stock markets, right, as a simple example, in good times, maybe we do 20% return. 
in uh, bad times, we can lose 10, 20% return. But there are other situations where you have good times, but inflation is picking up, company profit margins are shrinking, but still, environment is not bad. Maybe they make high single digit. Or you can have 1970s, uh, oil shock. Oil price went up 400%, nothing works, except for gold, natural resources, all right, and, and uh, a bit of uh, alternative investments. Um, we want to know how assets behave in different economic environments, and what Stashway does is to identify where we are today, and as the economic numbers changes, we try to find the right mix of assets that is right for you. I think in summary, that's what ERAA does. It stands for Economic Regime Based Asset Allocation. It's not a permanent portfolio. It adjusts, it adjusts itself, it adjusts your portfolio for free in line with economic situations. It's to help you better navigate changes in our lifetimes. Can you share a little bit of uh, how these changes are, are made? Does it need to tap into Freddie's brain in order for it to take effect? <laughs> or you know, what, what prompts the change? As a human, I wish it, it, it cares about me, but no. I have no say whatsoever in, um, in how the algorithm would uh, execute its, uh, its, its decisions. Where human comes in at Stashway is, I chair the investment committee at Stashway, where our duty is not to make decision. Our duty is to check all the inputs that's coming into the model. We document it, it's auditable documents. We make sure there's no garbage in, garbage out situation for models. It's not a black box that's taking wrong information. So to make sure things are done correctly. That's all we do. When all's are right, it's a click of a button and say, activate, go ahead. So it's not Skynet in Terminator, but it is a systematic algorithm with independent oversights as Stashaway. So uh, that's sadly my role these days, designing algorithm, executing algorithms. I have no say. I uh, don't know if I answered the question, but uh, that's my initial response. All right, yeah. yes, you have definitely. Yeah. And we're definitely excited to see uh, Stashaway coming in as the first <coughs> licensed robot advisory in uh, Malaysia. And it's uh, definitely good to see no minimum balances, mm. very low fees. But speaking of fees itself, because with um, mm. stash away even, even though it's low fees, the fees would still be higher than if an individual were to buy ETFs on their own. So how, how does stash away give value in that sense? Perfect question. Because I've tried doing it myself before as well, and then only to realize there's a lot of back-end fees on brokerage platforms. For example, do you know the currency conversion spread when they convert your profit and losses in US dollar back to ringgit? is quite a mystery. So there's a lot of hidden charges that people don't know. But more importantly, minimum sizes. Because uh, say you want to have 10 asset classes in your portfolio, and one guy is trading at $100 a piece, the minimum trade size is 50 units. So you need $50,000 now to just to rebalance your portfolio. You gotta be really wealthy to do anything. So for us, I believe that while you can have the expertise to do yourself, and you know all the hidden costs and you really drill through them and still you could not achieve the precision and the flexibility that comes with a platform like us. We deal with 0.0001 units of any securities out there. Just like uh, Bitcoin, there's 100,000 Satoshis in one Bitcoin. It's a fractional technology that brings the empowerment to people. Why is it important? Other than no minimum balance, it's more important because now, Whatever limited amount of money you have, you and I have, we can slice and dice those money into different portfolio. I can have multiple portfolio. I have a 30 year retirement goal, it's a different portfolio from sending a kid to university in 15 years time, or down payment for a flat in three years time. They all have different time horizon, different risk level. I can now, what, regardless of my wealth level, I can now afford multiple goals, multiple portfolios. I think that is a value of stash away, one of the very core propositions. Not to say we also pay for lawyers, custodians, institutional setup where the money is safe. Your money is not with stash away. Anything happens to stash away, it's segregated. There's a city bank, it's a custodian bank. There's a lot of little other benefits that's really important uh, for, for, the, uh, for the consumers that's not easily visible. But I would stop here because those are the very, very core value proposition that I want you to remember. 
All right, thanks for sharing, Freddie. And yeah, we definitely want to break out our piggy banks, you know. Right down to the last sentence. Right. No excuses. <laughs> sign up today. You don't have to invest. Just sign up. Find out more. Attend our conferences. Uh, see me on Facebook Lives. Uh, check out all our resource center on the website. Lots of articles ranging from financial planning basics to advanced to market outlook. Get comfortable before you invest. I want to say this. You got to step back before you invest. Number one have six to nine months of living expenses in cash. Number two, have a bad mood fund. When you're down, when you're feeling really, really unhappy, have a budget for treating yourself well. Treat yourself with care. And any money, any, any amount of assets you have in beyond that, those numbers, invest them systematically through a platform. And that would be my uh, advice to uh, anyone out there, really. Definitely yeah. words of wisdom indeed. And for our last and final question, so where is Stash Away he heading in the near term, say over the next uh, one or three years? What excites you? What keeps you up and energetic jumping out of bed in the morning? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an energetic, uh, I'm a high energy personality, so I get excited easily. Uh, when I think about Stash Away, it's even more so. Um, I'm extremely excited about what we have in store just this year in 2019 alone. We have so many product roadmap, innovation, new innovations, offerings in product, more globalized uh, access, even uh, different nature of uh, different types of portfolio, different services. We have so much planned out for the next five years that I felt just by fully focusing on working on them, time will just pass and here we are five years later. So I really uh, haven't talked much about beyond working and making the platform better, beyond the next three to five years. Haven't talked much about other plans, except for more products, more geography, more customers, and more prosperity for everyone. All right, so on behalf of uh, my PF and our followers, we just like to say a big thank you to Freddie for this uh, interview. Thank you for having me too. Thank you.